Hey everybody, it's another Saturday Scribbles episode, and this week I will be drawing some pumpkins, because October is here. Hooray! I know fall technically starts in September, but it never seems to really start until October for me. Now the first pumpkin that we're going to draw is just a basic cartoony looking pumpkin, and... If you really look at a pumpkin, or at least most pumpkins, they're not completely round. They kind of have a, an ovaly shape. Or at least the bigger pumpkins do. And then they have different dimensions to them. Like they're, they're not smooth, they're lumpy. And so you just want to draw the lumps in there. And you can shade them. If you colored this, you could leave highlights for them. I just kept it very simple. Just to show the outline. next pumpkin that I'm drawing is pretty much the same, <laughs> except that I'm drawing the inner lumps. <laughs> I'm not sure what you would call them. The inner curves of the pumpkin, and then I'm drawing the outer curves of the pumpkin that you can kind of see, but not fully because they're wrapping around the sides and the back of the pumpkin. And this pumpkin is going to be a jack-o'-lantern. So I don't want to draw the lines all the way through for the curves because I want room for the eyes. And depending on how you wanted this jack-o'-lantern to look, you could make the eyes black for the most part except for like the center area. And you could have like little orange flames in there to represent that it's glowing or you could have really bright yellow eyes and a bright yellow mouth and maybe a little bit of shading to show the candle inside. I just chose to do a basic black mouth and black eyes so you could kind of see. And my pumpkin looked very surprised <laughs> and so I gave it something to be surprised at. So I just drew a little ghost who's also surprised to see a jack-o'-lantern. Maybe it's the ghost's first Halloween. Who knows? <laughs> For this pumpkin, I took out a marker. And this one is more of a minimalistic style. And so I did a little bit of the outline. And then for all of the down strokes, I thicken the lines. And so you can tell that it's a pumpkin, but it's just, again, very minimalistic. And this pumpkin, I don't know. I, I really like the non-traditional looking pumpkins. And you don't see them represented as much as I feel like you should. <laughs> so I am drawing a non-traditional looking pumpkin. Or maybe this is just a gourd. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna call it a pumpkin. And so I'm drawing this non-traditional looking pumpkin. And then I'm going to give you some Zentangle patterns that you could use to fill in the curves of the pumpkin. I saw something similar to this on Pinterest for a round traditional looking pumpkin and they put in some really intricate and tangles into the curves and they had a lot of curves on their pumpkin but I wanted to keep it a little easier and in total this whole pumpkin drawing took me about oh about 10 minutes and so it's definitely something you could set aside time to do if you just needed an activity to calm down or to breathe a little. <laughs> and then I just put little sparklies beside the stem because I can. 
So this first Zentangle pattern is called 11, and it's just a square with an X looking thing inside. <laughs> I'm not, I really don't know. It's, it's like an X with a square inside of the square. And then you draw a little square around that, and you can color that in or you can color in the X thing, or you can color in the other square, and all kinds of variations. I chose to keep it simple and just colored in the little square inside of the X square, <laughs> and then just drew a square around that, or you can draw a square around that. I eventually did. And then I'm going to put that on the two curves closest to the center. This entangle is called chemistry and it looks like, it kind of looks like the hazard symbol, like the inside of the hazard symbol or hazardous waste symbol, I guess. Um, I don't know, it definitely does have a science-y, chemistry kind of feel to it. And it's very simple. Just pretend you're making a bunch of Ys in different directions. And then you can add little swirlies or stars or dots or whatever you want around them. Or you don't have to. And we're going to put those in the center of the pumpkin. This last disentangle is called vase. I don't know why it's called vase, unless it's vase in a different language, it could be. And it's just squiggles that come together and then you draw something in the center of the squiggles. And those are going to be on the outermost curves of the pumpkin. So because my pumpkin's so small, it was definitely a little tricky to get in there. I did not think about this thoroughly enough, clearly. I should have made my pumpkin bigger, but at least you know it is doable. And I'm just using a Sharpie fine point pen, so it's not even a micro pen per se. It's just a fine point pen. But definitely maybe if you want to be really relaxed when doing this, and not worrying so much about the tiny details, make your pumpkin bigger, or gourd, or whatever you're drawing. I highly recommend it, <laughs> but at least you know it is doable. So I'm just going in and drawing 11. And I did speed up the video. Again, this whole project took about 10 minutes, but I did speed it up for your sanity, but at least you can kind of see what I was doing. thing about doing something like this is that if you do it large enough you can go in and color it and you could even if you made your own you could distribute them as your own fall themed centangles you can give them to your kids or your friends or just make a punch for yourself and try different color schemes so yes do it <laughs> I think that would be really fun, assuming that you're not just doing this to relax. If you're doing this to just be creative, then I think that would be a, a good use of your time. 
So as I said, I'm going in here, I'm putting the chemistry Zentangle, and I just kind of did a little zigzag. I didn't really have a plan for this. The way I've seen this particular tangle used is they either have them clumped together and they just have them in different locations on the drawing or they stick them all together like this. And I thought this worked. And again, little dots and fun bits. Because why not? <laughs> I like them. Ta-da! These are the pumpkins that we created today. I hope that you go out and make lots of pumpkins. Thank you so much for watching. And your code word for fall challenge is pumpkin. P-U-M-P-K-I-N. Thanks, guys. See you next week.